today we'll be discussing diversity issues. Now we know as professional helpers that it's important that we have experience and skills working with a wide range of clients from various backgrounds with different experiences and with differing worldviews. But you'll want to be aware of lists of characteristics of various groups. Sometimes in books about multicultural counseling, you'll come across this sort of laundry list of characteristics of different groups. So they'll say, you know, African Americans tend to have these characteristics and these behaviors, and they present this way in therapy, or whatever the various groups are. But you want to be careful about these types of lists because these characteristics may or may not define the individual client who is seeking services. So they may have cultural characteristics and values that don't fit with this description in the book, and some of those descriptors in the book may not fit the client individually. So you'll have to remember that within group differences often exceed between group differences, meaning that members of the same group can be as different or more different from one another than they are from people outside their group. Don't assume that because people are members of the same group that they have the same characteristics. So you'll want to focus on the client's unique identity. This is taking an ideographic perspective. But you'll also want to focus on the commonalities and the differences between your client and their cultural group. So again, you can look at the group as a whole, but also the client as an individual. And you'll want to consider the intersection of multiple identities. So you want to take into consideration your client's ethnicity, their religion, their race, sexual orientation, gender identity, age, socioeconomic level. You want to look at how all those things intersect to form the unique individual that is your client. So how do you practice ideographically? Again, remember that the client is a unique mixture of characteristics and qualities, and they are unlike anyone else. But you also have to remember that the individual is embedded in a group. So you kind of want to think about this as concentric circles. Your client, the unique individual, is at the center. The next larger circle would be their cultural group. And then the outer circle would be the universal level commonalities. So you want to examine all of those areas in working with your client. So the individual, the group, and then sort of these universal commonalities. And also, remember that the client formulates and articulates their own cultural identity. They're going to define their cultural identity for themselves and articulate that to you. You can help them articulate that, but you don't determine for them what it means to be a member of these various groups. So a few guidelines for practicing ideographically. You want to engage in cultural self-awareness, and this includes an exploration of your privileges and disadvantages. So what statuses that you hold give you privileges in this society? and what statuses could result in some level of disadvantage. You want to avoid opposing your values on the client, and you'll have to accept your naivete regarding others. You'll have to have an attitude of genuine curiosity. You'll have to adapt the, the stance that you don't know and that the client is going to tell you about themselves. So don't assume that because you've worked with people from this group before or you've done your research that you know something about the client automatically. You want to show cultural empathy. We've talked about showing empathy to the individual client, but also have empathy towards some of the cultural issues and cultural traumas and cultural background that they are part of. You'll incorporate cultural considerations into counseling and avoid stereotyping. You also want to determine the relative importance of a client's primary cultural roles. So at different times in your work with the client, Certain roles may have more importance. Certain roles may be primary. Like for me, an example, in certain situations, my identity as a disabled woman or a disabled person, that sort of takes the forefront and I'm not so focused on you know, issues of race or ethnicity. So depending on the issue you're dealing with, depending on the time that you're working with the client, certain roles may come into the forefront, others may sort of fade into the background and the level of importance of those roles may change. Avoid blaming the victim. You want to sort of take a systemic perspective and think not only about issues that may reside within the client, but issues that may be 
caused or exacerbated by the systems within which they function. So avoid looking solely to your client and within your client as the reason for their issues. You'll want to remain flexible in the selection of interventions and examine counseling theories for bias. So remember that most of our theories, our traditional counseling theories, are developed from a primarily Western, primarily male perspective. So whenever using a theory, you want to examine that theory for bias. Build on your client's strengths. We don't want to work purely from a deficit model. Don't solely think about what is wrong with your client, what needs to be fixed about your client. Always look to client strengths that can help them progress in therapy. And you want to avoid protecting clients from emotional pain. Now, certainly we're not intentionally inflicting emotional pain on your clients, but the, the goal is for them to work through issues, even if working through those issues could cause them pain. So you don't want to develop this sort of condescending paternalistic attitude toward, toward your clients where you feel that they need to be babied and protected. They're going to have to go through some discomfort in order to reach the goals that you have uh, worked on and determined together.